So what are the objectives? Um, so by the end of the webinar, uh, you'll be aware of the country profiles, and where to find them on the TTF uh, website. Uh, you'll, just, you'll just know what kind of type of information is available and how hopefully it can be used to help support your due diligence. And so it, it's really the main focus of this webinar is to signpost you to the information. It's certainly not to talk through each and every website that we have found. Um, there'll be lots of websites on the profiles that we're not going to be um, highlighting in the webinars. Um, and um, you'll be, uh, some of you who came last week and attended last week, just to let you know, we are not going to do the same uh, the same structure of webinar this week um, because there is no point in making you sit through an hour of, of the same websites. So we're changing the structure this week slightly and the first ha half an hour or so we'll be looking at new websites specifically for Russia um, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, for example, uh, NEPCON um, DT is here and she'll be talking through, uh, sorry, DT from NEPCON is on the webinar and she will be talking through the Global Forest Registry and giving us an update on uh, the, the new uh, um, risk assessments that they will be going up onto, the web, onto their website shortly. Um, and we'll also be doing, uh, we'll also be revisiting the Global Forest Watch website uh, just because there are new things that I haven't, that I didn't show you last week that I would like to show you this week. Um, for those of you who have not attended a webinar at all, panic not, we will be looking at uh, some of the uh, useful web links in the last half an hour or so. And everybody is welcome to stay for the entire hour. We'd be delighted if you did stay for the entire hour. But we do understand if you uh, would like to leave after the first half an hour or so um, when we start repeating uh, links from last week's webinar, uh, we do understand if you'd wish to leave. Uh, just to let you know, the webinar, uh, the webinar is recorded, so you can watch it again, or if um, someone missed it, they, are, uh, they will be able to um, to watch it at a later, later stage, and it will be posted on the TTF uh, website. So that's where you'll be able to find it. So moving on. So we looked at 21 country profiles for TTF. Um, five different regions, mainly. Uh, so Asia, we looked at uh, China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. For Europe, we looked at Bulgaria, Poland, Romania, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, North America, we looked at Canada and the US. South America was just Brazil and Uruguay. And then seven countries in Africa. So we looked at uh, Central African Republic, Cameroon, uh, Côte d'Ivoire, DRC, Ghana, Liberia, and the Republic of Congo. Why did we choose these countries? Well, um, it was actually based on the coverage of trade between the above countries in the UK and the EU, and then, and also the countries that Anand considered were most important for his, for his members, the TTF members. Um, if there is a country that is not included in the country profiles that you think would be really useful uh, to be included, please let Anand know. Now, I have to, um, I have to actually say at this point, Anand is, was hoping to be involved in all of the webinars, but unfortunately he's been called off into a, uh, a meeting that he could not get out of uh, today, but he will be back uh, into the webinar series from next week. But any questions, please just email him. Uh, he'd be delighted to answer them. So the webinar series, the first one was based in China. Uh, last week, we looked mainly at Indonesia and Malaysia. This week, as I said, it's going to be Russia and Eastern Europe. Next Tuesday, we're looking at the African, the seven African countries. 
And then the very last uh, webinar uh, in two weeks' time will be looking at the Americas, so those four countries in both North and South America. And we'd be delighted if you signed up uh, for them. So what do the profiles look like? I'll, in a minute, I'll show you the, the profiles on the on the TTF website, but really they kind of look, they have, in fact, let me go there now. They have an introduction. Oh, actually, so the risk information portal is based on the information uh, on the members areas. If you go down to country and risk information, then you come to uh, this page. So click on to the Lucy, just to interrupt you, and um, we might be, I don't think your screen share um, works. Screen. Okay, just, uh, let me have a look. Um, apologies, everyone. Here we go. There we go. Um, if anyone is struggling to see, um, you can also make your screen, um, you can do a full, a full screen. Um, and by doing that, it's just the two arrows pointing away from each other at the right-hand side of, side of the view window um, in the WebEx um, pop-up, just so everyone's aware. OK. Thank you, Rose. Right, so um, this is what I was trying to show you. The, it's on the TTF uh, pages under the, uh, the members area. So if you go to members area and then down to the country and risk information, uh, this is what you get. So uh, the risk pages, the profiles, uh, can be accessed through that link and you just click into it. And, and today we are mostly focusing on Russia. Now the other Eastern European countries are coming. Profiles haven't been uploaded yet, um, but should be should uh, be uploaded in the next couple of days. Um, so today we are mainly focusing on Russia. So if you click into the map, it comes up with the uh, the country profile that um, Effica wrote for TTF, and it follows the same uh, structure throughout all of the profiles. So it starts with an introduction, which gives you an overview of the country and the type of forest uh, within, the, within the country. Um, it most likely goes through the, um, the rate of deforestation, gives you an, uh, an understanding of the, uh, the forest cover, and possibly um, if there are any new laws that need to be highlighted, there'll be an indication of that. Um, with lots of links, uh, I mean, for example, you can see here that there's the link to the WWF Russian report that was written in, in 2013. Um, we've also uh, got a few statistics of the UK imports by product group, and then the key import and export data again will be uploaded shortly so that you will be able to see uh, the top few countries that Russia imports to that it um, uh, that it exports and and also the type of products that it is um, it, that it is dealing with um, Common trade species, we have tried to divide this into natural forests and plantations. There will, there will probably be some species that have been missed out. If you can see a, uh, a glaring uh, omission, please let us know. Um, but it gives you a, an idea of the type of species that uh, is being harvested from, in this case, Russia. So there are two main areas of focus in the webinar. And you know, as I said, because we have already done a, an Indonesian Malaysian webinar, we're not going to be going through uh, some of the web links in this first half an hour uh, that we have already done. So the specific ones that I thought would be interesting to pick out, um, for example, the Federal Forestry Agency of the of Russian Federation. So if you click on the link, it should take you to, and apologies, I now have to find it, this one. So 
This is the Federal Forestry Agency in English. However, you can see it's a very bare website. If you take the web, the web address, put it into Google Translate, this is one I've created earlier, put it into Google, Google Translate and take off the English and translate from uh, Russian to English, you'll see it's much more populated uh, than the English uh, counterpart. Um, there are always parts that don't translate, uh, so there will always be parts that, uh, that you won't be able to read unless you are fluent in Russian. Um, but most interesting parts for this, you've got very up-to-date information from the Federal Forest Agency on uh, forest fires, for example, straight into the news. Um, and then a very interesting part on the documentation you go, you, um, let's hope it clicks in. Yes. Um, on the left hand side, you can see that there are federal laws and decrees and resolutions, etc., etc. Um, so, if, for example, you were interested in getting the most up to date version of the Russian Roundwood Act um, in 2013, you will be able to see that you can find it. Um, in English from this website, which is a really useful thing because um, FAO Lex has it in Russian, uh, but actually this is the first place that I've been able to find that has it in English. Um, the Russian uh, the Russian Roundwood Act also is uh, analysed in this Forest Trends Policy Brief. And what's very interesting, it gives you an overview here, um, scope and requirements, and then here it goes into a little bit more detail about the different scope and re scopes and requirements of the Act. Um, but most importantly, you have the phasing in of implementation of the Act. Uh, and here you can see tomorrow um, the enforcement date for these three key issues. Uh, comes into into effect. So by tomorrow, uh, everybody should be implementing the information system. There is a requirement to declare all transactions involving Roundwood, and penalties will be implemented for the non-compliance uh, regarding Roundwood measurement in the forest and the, and the marking of trees, which was the main uh, main changes in the Roundwood Act. Um, let me go back to the country profile. So other useful websites um, from, from here are the, um, the wood.ru. So you click in a non-translatable uh, browser and it comes up like this. However, if I go back to Google Translate, uh, this, this is what it looks like. It's a tricky website. Um, however, there's good information if you know where to look. Um, so right at the bottom, um, I mean, you've got things about the Forest Sector Exchange Network, but um, I thought the most interesting part of it was down here on the news of the wood industry. Um, you've got an archive and search button here, uh, but it's it's very recent. You can see that this was uh, put up today. Um, and there are all sorts of forest fires uh, information that you can, you can get uh, from this website. Um, I, I, to be perfectly honest, it seems to be a lot of forest fires information. So uh, um, a good website to go to if you want to check on, uh, on your, your specific region for example. On the left hand side you've got not only the news of the wood industry but slightly above you've got the forestry uh, tab and here you, you've got lots of information again um, but what was quite useful was the description and use of the main forest species uh, in Russia uh, which gives you an overview of where the species can be found. Um, 
I am quite sure you're all aware of these things, but again, it's just useful to have uh, in front of you that if you have documentation saying that you are getting a certain species from a certain area um, and you are unsure whether this is the case, then you know, perhaps this is a good um, possibility to check whether it is a um, whether it is likely or not. Um, now, the other website that we're going to look at, or another website that we're going to look at from the um, from the profile, is the Global Forest Registry. And this is where I think I'm going to um, see if we can pass over to Dite from uh, Netcon, who is going to talk through in a little detail about. Uh, uh, Netcon's involvement in the Global Forest Registry and how, how it can be used. Um, so this is where I need to try and stop sharing and then I think I pass on the presentation ball to DT. All right, thank you Lucy. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, all right. Uh, I don't think I'm a host yet, or... Yes, I think you are. Yeah? yeah. All right. So what we didn't talk through was how oh, to right. share my screen. Yes. Sorry, I think uh, Rose has just said that I will need to carry on sharing my screen. Yeah. So let yeah. me try and do that. All right. Um, well, if you can go into the Global Forest Registry then. Um, well, and uh, hello everyone. My name is Dita. I'm based in Denmark, and I work for Nepcon. And to you, so to, them, <laughs> to you who don't know Nepcon, we we work with forest certification and legality as well. We're a recognized monitor organization under the UTR, um, and we're involved in different kind of projects. And while we're waiting for Lucy to get the uh, Dita, I can't. Again, can you? Sh oh yes. Wait a minute. If um, I can now. Right. Yeah. Yep. So what I've done is, you can so carry on um, talking through the website, but then um, Lucy will kind of be your your hands, as it is, as it were, and she'll share it around. Yeah, we'll try that. Um, yeah, we've been involved in developing this global forest registry, and global forest registry was developed between uh, FSC, Rainforest Alliance, and Nepcon, and. Are you having trouble sharing the screen, Lucy? Or cause I cannot see oh. the screen on the. Yeah. There. Oh, there it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, can you go into the the first uh, the page? If you go into uh, the front page of the Global Forest Registry, because there's right now there's two versions of the Global Forest Registry. It looks the same, it's perfectly the same, and I'll start talking about the, or introducing the old version. Um, but this is this is the front page you can see, uh, and then you can click the map here in front, and you'll enter the web page. Um, so the Global Forest Registry is is about 150 countries that's covered by risk assessments here, and some risk assessment has been developed very briefly with input from organisations and also NEPCON. Um, but very briefly, um, uh, where the risks are not that well described. But if you then go up in the approved, uh, select a country, like approved, select a country, yeah, select there. All these countries have been approved by FSC. So um, these are actually recognized by both FSC and NEPCON. Um, if you go down to Ukraine, or not NEPCON, sorry, but just uh, FSC, Ukraine, for example, which could be interesting for you. And click Ukraine. Yeah, there you can see the actual risk assessment um, or the risk profile. So this risk assessments are based on the FSC control wood standard. So it means that all the categories it's been assessed on uh, correspond to their their standard. And these are five, five categories. There's legality. There's traditional and civil rights high conservation value forest, yeah, exactly, conversion and GMO. 
and I could imagine what's most interesting for you would be the, the legality, so we can go back to that. Yeah. So you see the big red dot in the right corner? This is whether the whole country is, is specified or if there's low risk for all five categories. But you can also see from, if you look at just the legality highlighted, then there is, at the right-hand side, uh, a mark indicating if it's specified or if it's low risk. And if it, this had been low risk, it would have been green. But right now for Ukraine, it's indicated as specified or unspecified, sorry. Um, and then there will be all different, um, the all subcategories under legality uh, is like uh, one zero, one one. Um, and this is, can you press C justification on country level? So is there any evidence of the uh, evidence of enforcement or logging related law? If you scroll down a bit, Julie, uh, Lucy, sorry. Uh, see, there you will find a justification of the country uh, risks. So this is relating to logging laws, enforcement of the logging laws. Um, and it will be, that will be applicable for all the different subcategories um, on the criteria. And if you scroll further down, a little further down, you'll be able to see the sources used for finding these categories for each of the, yeah, under the justification, there'll be sources. So if you need to know more information, you can go down and look there. Um, so this is based on the current control wood standard. But there is a new control wood standard coming up, and here you can maybe close down this window, and I think we should go to the new web page. So if you go to the front page of the Global Forest Registry again. Yeah, and scroll down a little bit. Then you see there's a launch of an updated global forest registry. And you have to go to the first line where it says hey, updated version is accessible here. Uh, it's in the um, first paragraph that is not highlighted. Okay. Yeah, there. So you press there. Um, and the country profiles that's located here, or the risk assessment, sorry, these are all applicable, or these are uh, made in correspondence to the coming control wood standard. And there the legality indicators is much more specified. It's uh, the same um, subcategories as we have in our uh, legal source standard, which has been recognized by the uh, EU Commission under the EUTR. So it's, it's a lot more uh, goes down to, to detail level on legality. So you can maybe try and, and choose Russia. We can look further into that. So the setup is the same. You click the country and then the risk assessment will pop up. And Russia, you can see, is also a specified risk. There's still the five different categories um, and legality here is first, so also specified. And there the setup is the same with the justification. So here the, the subcategory is a bit different. Here the first one is land tenure and management rights. So it's what risk are there in connection to land tenure and management rights? There'll be a brief justification saying, um, is there a risk here? There'll be the sources. And then if you scroll a bit down, which I think can be very useful for your uh, due diligence system, is control measures. So these have been introduced. So what can be done if there is a risk? What should you as a company do to mitigate this risk? So you should see if there's tax authorities having confirmed valid tax, valid tax registration. Um, have a look at the business register we should confirm the business license and place, um, and so on. And that's, this will be the case for all um, subcategories down the, uh, for all the applicable subcategories for Russia. Um, so the setup will be the same. Um, so this, these risk assessments, um, these 20 risk assessments that are here on this updated profile, um, these are still in public consultation, so they might change a little bit from when they're official. Um, but you can still enter them and you can hopefully gain some knowledge and you're also welcome to come in with, with comments. Um, and that's another feature that's been put in with this updated registry that you can come, um, you can give comments um, if you have any comments that you disagree, if you have any updated information, and that way you could help um, keeping the whole system updated. 
So currently there's 20 countries that are more specified, like, like Russia here, uh, and we're working on 33 additional countries that will be uploaded, well, when they're done, but the, it'll be conducted within the next one and a half year. So, yeah. Um, I think that was basically all. I don't know if you have any questions or if there's room for questions, uh, Lucy. Yes, there's definitely room for questions. Yeah. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, there you can see all the different countries, maybe, yeah. if you say yes. Yeah. Um, to all the countries that are there. So actually, for this webinar, it's very relevant because you've got Bulgaria, Poland, Romania, Russia, and Ukraine. Yeah, I can actually, Ukraine should, I think that's just, uh, I think they've put in all the countries that have been approved by FSC. So Ukraine right. is actually still only conducted for the old uh, control wood standard. Yeah. Um, so not for the, for the more detailed one, which is coming up. Okay. Um, but they will come. There will be a <laughs> absolutely. One yeah. Absolutely. I don't think we've got any questions, DJ. But thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Um, much appreciated. Yeah. Well, if anything comes up, you're welcome to just write us, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. I will attempt to take back. Oh no, I still have. Right. So. Let's go back to the legal framework. I think actually now I'm going to ask Rose to go through um, the news, local news stories that that uh, are often a good source of information to keep uh, everything up to date. Um, Rose, shall I pass over the presenter ball? Uh, that's fine. I can do that from here. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen as Lucy was sharing before. Here we go. You can see my lovely fox in the background. <laughs> okay, so as Lucy has said, we've mainly been focusing on Russia for this presentation. And one of the best online news stories that we could find was for the Moscow Times. Um, so the Moscow Times is um, an English language newspaper um, and its circulation is around 35,000 people, um, at least on, on them in paper format, but it's also very popular online. So as you can see, it's got a search bar here where you can do searches for keywords such as, you know, forestry, timber, logging, etc. Um, this is a particularly um, good story that was recently published. This was from April 2015, and it um, Russia leads forestry destruction ranking, and it's actually referring to the um, forest fires, as you can see from the photo here. So, I mean, for each profile, we've put in um, the local news sources, and they're just very useful as a first stop before you kind of go into any more detail to look through and see what the main headlines are for the day, um, or you know, the the past kind of couple of months. And obviously, these are going to be um, probably more business and industry related, as opposed to, um, you know, if you went to a university and looked at their research papers on the area. But it's, it's good to see um, what's going on with any political change that you need to be aware of, for example. So that's one of the main useful points. Um, another useful site, um, I will just talk about it very briefly because we did talk about it last week as well well is the illegal logging portal which is run by Chatham House um, in the UK and they will give a brief um, you know kind of breakdown of each country um, in terms of its um, logging and it also kind of compiles related content now this could be news stories or it could be um, events or it could be research papers as well and you can search these from the newest dates to the oldest or um, yeah you've got that there and it will say quite clearly news date and the source as well because obviously with news stories it is important to think about where the source is coming from and it gives you a little bio here and to read it you simply just have to click into it um, so I'll just open this up and so you can see that comes through here 
which is very handy. The another useful website is the Euro Forest Portal. Um, now, obviously, it's got lots of countries here downside, um, including obviously all the ones talking about today. Uh, this is just the Bulgaria page. And as you can see, it's got some highlights, country highlights, direct links, um, but it also has lots of different sources as well. So, for example, databases, country data. Um, you can see I've been clicking through quite a few of these today. Um, soil science, forest planning, there's lots involved there. And when you click on the link, you'll get a little breakdown of the link that you clicked on. So, for example, this is the Executive Forest Agency in Bulgaria, and it has a little description of what you'll find on the site, the URL to the site, and also the language. So, as you can see here, the language of this site is in Bulgarian, which is not a problem. What we'll do is we'll just use our translator service. So, as I've done a following on here, from Bulgaria to English, and it comes up here. And this is just the main activities page, just a nice example, just to show you um, the types of information that you can find. Obviously, as Lucy has said, pictures, for example, these won't change language, but you can see all the different tabs are now in English, which makes it much easier. Um, there is a variation between each country as to what information is available. Um, for example, some countries you will find um, there's lots of data, but not much in terms of policy, and others might be the way around. So it's also having a look and using these as your starting point uh, before going into more detailed looks at other countries. Um, another useful website which is specific to Russia is um, this website here, which is the Russian Forestry Review. And this is an, a magazine. They offer a print subscription or an online subscription, um, or you can get the sort of later editions free of charge. So, for example, you, there's um, 2006, 2007, 8, um, 11, 2013, and these are all free of charge. 2015, the most recent, recent one, you would have to um, pay to view at the moment because it is so recent, but the charge isn't, um, you know, it's not overly expensive. And what these profiles do, I'll just go into one for you quickly. If it loads, there's a problem with using the internet quite a lot. It goes a bit on the go slow. Here we are. So, what these magazines do is they're specialised for um, the timber and forestry industry, in that it goes, it can give you brief overviews um, over time of what's changed in the industry. Um, you know, we've got wood sawing, lumbering, um, panel and plywood, um, pulp and paper, you know, lots there, lots to do. And, you know, you can see they're packed with information. They are quite difficult to read online, so I would recommend printing these out if you did want to have a read of them. Um, but one thing I particularly liked about these websites, the um, magazine at modern, is that they give a sort of a mini overview of each area. So, for example, this is the North Coast Forest, so it'll give you a little look at um, transport in the area, um, the forest estate, so it'll say, for example, um, what kind of forest is there. Um, so, for example, here we've got nearly 80% of the forested area in the region is made up of commercial forests that feed the processing industry, whereas for others, they'll say it's quite mineral heavy and the forestry isn't, um, you know, as as available as there might be in, in other regions. So it's definitely worth a read just to see what's going on in each area. Um, when the 2015 will become available for free, I'm not entirely certain. Um, it could be a couple of months, it could be a bit longer than that. So if you were interested in the 2015, um, you can look at subscriptions and things just by looking at this little left-hand side here. Okay. I do have a few more um, which we can look at, but I think what we'll do is we'll do all the, the country specific sites first, and then we'll go to our more general ones, which we have covered in the past um, later on. So, Lucy, I'm going to pass back to you. 
she said. Right. Okay. Um, this is the last web, web link that uh, I'd like to go through uh, for a unique web link that we haven't looked at before. Global Forest Watch, we did look at before, but the uh, new section uh, is under the blog. So oh, if you we, want to just share your screen again, Lucy. Am I might do, not doing that again? Yeah, Sorry, everyone. Okay. Sometimes it will do it, and other times it won't. It's a bit tricky. There we go, we can see. Right. So, um, Global Forest Watch, we did look at last week, and we will go into a little bit more detail later on. But if you go to, um, this is the home, and then you've got the interactive map, the countries, and then what's uh, important for us today is the blog. Um, and this gives you uh, various uh, news roundups and and maps of the week. So actually, I was looking at map of the week. I hope that it's clicked in. Um, and it, it picks out certain areas on a weekly basis. So for example, it has demonstrated um, the, uh, that you can spot the uh, tornado tracks from um, uh, using Global Forest Watch and the tree cover loss uh, in the US uh, a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, my computer is very much on go slow, but I'm hoping that it starts speeding up soon. Um, so if you if we click down. This is not supposed to happen. Right, let's try again. So map of the day. It might be, Rose, that I need to pass this over to you. OK. Sorry, I was speaking away to you there, and I didn't have my mic on. Um, yes, what I'll do is I can share my screen again, and you can talk through the, um, the site. That's not a problem. I, uh, no, I am I am here. So as I was saying, the map of the day, map of the week has got various posts. Um, so you can see that it's uh, forest and land fire spike in Alaska is the most recent one. But if, for example, we type in Russia, uh, it will come up with our results for Russia. So you can see it's 2nd of April, so really quite recent. Um, there was a report that tree cover loss uh, not only remains high globally, but there is, has been a spike in a few countries. And it will tell you, it goes through you, uh, the, the reasoning behind their, um, their reporting, um, and it will uh, show you not only graphs, um, but also uh, maps as well. Uh, so you can see here the new maps show a recent increase in tree cover loss in the boreal forest in Russia. Uh, it just gives you a more interesting outlook on Global Forest Watch tool and how it can be used. Um, it's not just the maps, there are also, I mean, for example, if we go into news roundups, um, and then uh, again, we'll type in Russia. We can see um, all sorts of things, but for example, here, uh, map of the week in the middle of April was all about forest fires in Siberia. Um, that can be tracked through Global Forest Watch. It's a really powerful tool, um, and there's just uh, I'm learning more and more about it weekly. There is so much uh, that you can gain from this tool if you know how to use it. Um, so once again, if anybody would like to have a 
uh, tutorial from Global Forest Watch, we can, or from WRI, uh, who um, are associated with Global Forest Watch, we can certainly um, ask, ask them to do so. They are very, very willing to do so. Um, now, at this point in time, uh, anybody who has been on the Indonesian Malaysian uh, webinar and who would like to leave, um, because we're going to go through some of the uh, web links that we went through last week, you'd be very welcome to leave. We'd be delighted if you were to stay. Um, but other things that we found very useful in the Global Forest Watch tool, for example, if we go to home, uh, and go to the interactive map, for example. You can see that it has the map of the world. Um, and then we can click on information that we are interested about. So, for example, we get to focus on Romania. And um, you can zoom in. So we change things by looking at these buttons. So we've got forest change, and you can uh, look at loss and gain. You've got forest cover. Uh, you've got land use, which is really, uh, really useful. I mean, we looked at oil palm plantations in Indonesia last week. Uh, conservation, so protected areas. So if we switch off gain, and we put on protected areas, at the bottom here, you've got the tree cover loss over a time period. So you can see um, how the pink suddenly builds up over a period of time. And it's, it's more potent and more powerful the more you uh, go into it. So the blue indicates the protected areas. The pink little speckled uh, spots are the forest change the losses. And you can um, uh, indicate your concession area. If you know the GPS, you can go to the search and put in your GPS coordinates, and it will pick up the uh, coordinates from, it will pick up your search area and your concession area. Um, other, other tools that we found very useful was the FAO LEX. So this is, it covers all the legislation globally, um, and you can focus it on forests. So if, for example, you were just looking at um, the advanced search, you'd go to forests, search, and then you could put in your country. So if we put in Russian Federation, and then search it, you can see that these are all the uh, amendments or the regional laws um, for uh, for Russia. Um, so the Russian Roundwood Act, uh, I have already checked, and it is actually on page two. So if we go to page two, it's always useful if you know the the number, uh, if you know when it was uh, when it was amended, and you can then pick it up quite quickly from there. So the Roundwood Act is the federal law uh, 415, and you can click into it through there. Uh, however, it is only in Russian. So um, unless your Russian is brilliant, then Google Translate is, is, is a useful tool to be able to use. Um, I mean, these are just a few of the websites that we have picked out over the from the profiles uh, that would be that are just uh, um, useful websites to to know about. I mean, there's um, other ones. For example, if you have a CITES species or you want to know whether the species you're trading in is CITES, you've got speciesplus.net. Uh, Corruption Perception Index is a uh, is a really good uh, website and tool for assessing country risk. Um, and Shall we go through that, Lucy? I've got that um, up on my screen. We can go through. Yes, we can do. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm just sharing my screen again. Hello, everyone. Um, so, as Ms. was saying, um, there's speciesplus.net, which is the useful website if you have um, any CITES um, concerns and you want to kind of double check that. Um, the other thing I really like about this website is that you can um, filter your search by location. So, for example, um, if I put in Russia, here we go, the Russian Federation. Um, I feel we are picking on Russia a bit today. It's just a, you know, it's a very easy one to do. Um, if you do a blank search, you get the list of the 270 species, um, which are involved, um, you know, that are in Russia that you can you can look through. So if you have, you know, you don't have a specific species that you're after, you can have a look through that way, which is really interesting. It's really helpful. Um, you know, the other websites that we have. Um, shown you and are on the profiles will also have this information. But what we found was, you know, the reason we kind of put these websites into the profiles is for their ease and for your convenience as well. Um, the other website that um, Lucy mentioned was the Corruption Deception Index, um, and this is by Transparency International. And so this is to give an indication of the perceived index. Um, perceived corruption um, of the country um, that you're looking at. So they have results from 2014 uh, back to 2012. So you can look um, just through the list here, or you can go into the interactive map at the top. So for example, we've got the UK over here and Russia. And if I hover over Russia, you can see that it's come up. Um, so the 2014 score was 27, 2013 and 2012 were both 28. Um, and from the on the scale, uh, which is down here, we've got highly corrupt is zero, and very clean is 100. So the best score that a country can reach is 100. And 175 countries are ranked in this on this website, and Russia is currently 136. So this is their perceived in that uh, perceived corruption is not, um, you know, it's not been verified. It's been these results have been gathered through a um, discussion with key. Uh, key stakeholders and um, engaging with people in, in the area and it goes into a lot more detail um, through the website itself and you can download the brochure, the infographics, um, you know it's quite a good website to have a little a play around with really and just have a look at how things all been organised. Um, for a comparison, oh sorry I just zoom out quite a lot there, uh, let's see but let me hover over the UK. There we go. So the UK is um, got a score of 78 and is 14 out of 175. Um, if you want to compare in a region, you can also do that down here. If you go to all countries and territories, you can just say um, you know Eastern Europe, Central Asia, European Euro Union. Um, you can filter it in lots of different ways. So that's also a very useful website to have a look through. Um, Lucy, are there any more websites? Um, you would like to raise? I think I'm quite happy with them. No, I, th I think actually the main websites uh, have been discussed. Um, I mean, as, as Rose and I keep saying, that there are lots of links on the profiles that we haven't discussed today. We've just picked out a few, possibly a few of our favourites and possibly a few of you know, the, the most useful uh, to you. But um, you know, future proofing these um, let me just move on actually so future proofing these country profiles you can see when it was last updated the date should be at the top of each of the profile um, and then just make sure that the sustainable sustainability briefings which are sent out uh, by TTF the um, the local news stories and then the international uh, websites such as Monga Bay um, are really are really useful, and you can set up uh, um, kind of email newsletters that come into your um, inbox on a a daily or a, a weekly basis through Bunga Bay, um, and they just give you you know, a very brief oversight of each story, and you can click into it, um, and that's uh, a, a useful way to make sure that the uh, 
that you're keeping up to date with the countries or the regions that you're most interested in. Um, and lastly, it's just to say thank you. We've been uh, delighted to be able to work with the TTF on not only the country profiles, but the webinars as well. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really useful to be able to talk through the country profiles and make sure that the most uh, important data, uh, the most important websites and the most useful websites are, are, are brought to your attention. But um, if you, when the profiles for Eastern Europe and uh, you, Russia is already on there, um, if you um, find that there are you, things missing or that you would like to have something added, then you please let Anand know because it is you a continuous, uh, hopefully live documents and that they will be work in progress um, continuously. So um, thank you very much. The next webinar that we're hosting is uh, exactly the same time next week and we'll be looking at the African countries. So it's, it's going to be very, very different, lots of new websites um, to look at and we hope that you all join us then. So many thanks and bye-bye. Um, Thank you very much, everybody.